Church, we're excited about tonight, and I think that uh, if you have the endurance to stay all the way through to the end, you'll be pleasantly, I think, uh, challenged and certainly uh, given the opportunity to check your own heart and to make sure that at a time like this in the world in which we live in, that you and God are right with one another through Jesus Christ. He is the key. He is the touch point, the hallmark between us and God, and um, he's personal. And so that's vital tonight. Remember, for some of you who uh, may be new to a Happening Now uh, gathering, Happening Now was put together a long time ago now, my goodness, and um, I wanted to refute uh, the, really the strange and bizarre uh, narrative that was going on during the days, if you remember the blood moons, you remember the blood moons events and all that, and there were all these books being sold, and all of these people got on the bandwagon, and they, they predicted the, the end of the world, they predicted the rapture date, they predicted this, they predicted that, and it, that really, frankly, infuriated me, and so we began happening now, and that was to answer the events that are going on in the world in light of the Bible, and we, that we would put it up to Scripture and come to a conclusion based on the Bible, not what we think or what we feel. And that conclusion, being biblically founded, caused us all and causes us all today to be in a safe place, meaning this. With what's happening in the world, is it classified under interesting but no real biblical relation whatsoever, or is it something that is leaning toward future biblical prophecy? Is it something that could be heading in that direction? Well, we would put it in the right category. Is there something that's going on that is very close or even possibly fulfilling Bible prophecy? We would place that in its proper place. And then, of course, we would uh, come to the conclusion that no matter what, we are to be, all of us, watchmen on the wall. We are to all be like the sons of Ishakar, where we, through the Bible, were able to discern the times and the seasons and what Israel ought to do, and in this case, what we ought to do. And so the Bible is both the telescope and the microscope into the future. It's the only book in the world that predicts and is predictive And it is 100% accurate, meaning this, what Bible prophecies have been fulfilled, have been fulfilled 100% accurately. The ones that remain to be fulfilled, we know from past fulfillments of Bible prophecy, they too will be fulfilled literally 100%. This book is not talking about a type or a symbolic end time scenario. Some... 30% 30%-ish, some say 33% of the entire scriptures are of prophetic nature. That means God and the God of the Bible knows the future and he's revealed that to us in the Bible that we might be comforted, that we might have assurance because God, the God of the Bible is the only one who knows the future and he has chosen to reveal that, the scripture says, Uh, to us, if we would just take the time. And we're going to take time tonight, 90 minutes. And so this has been, uh, it's been a long time, although we've done some happening nows together. For most of you, he does not need a introduction. But for those of you who are joining us, uh, or you're here tonight, and you've never had the opportunity to meet what, my goodness, we were sitting down at dinner, and Uh, we came to the realization that we have been good friends for 25 years now. And um, frankly, I know many of you have gone to Israel, but trust me, you've never gone to Israel the way that we do Israel together. He's a major in the Israeli Defense Force. He is uh, one who literally travels the globe uh, hundreds of thousands of miles every year as a representative of Jesus to churches and to conferences worldwide, and um, I can't say enough about him. Uh, there's, a, there's a handful of people in this world that I could leave into the trust or the care, my wallet, the keys to my house, my family, 
Uh, but I can do that with Amir Serfate. So please give a warm welcome tonight to our good friend, Amir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to dive right in. We're going to put a verse up on the screen, and it's going to seem kind of uh, hollow at, at, at the start, but out of 2 Timothy chapter 3, on the screen, we should have it any moment. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. And I love that there's no period right there. There's no comma right there. We've left that open at the end of the word come. Times will come. Perilous times will come. And the word that Paul is writing to Timothy is perilous is meaning times will come where if you are not rooted and grounded, you will be worn down. And we are in the days of people being worn down. And uh, we don't want you to be worn down. And so uh, tonight we're going to be embarking upon topics that are very, very, uh, what's the word, in Amir's wheelhouse. Uh, It's in his lane. Uh, And so it's going to be very, very good stuff. He he has the opportunity to bring to us things that uh, most people don't have... uh, the opportunity to do that, being Israeli, living in Israel, being in the IDF, um, God has opened some tremendous doors. So, Amir, let's just j- jump in. I'll, I'll set it up this way by asking you. In fact, I'm surprised I'm going to be asking you this because I thought that U.S. politics was the biggest circus on the planet. And it might be. But unfortunately, lately in Israel, there seems to be... a uh, Another ring forming to this circus. <laughs> what? Tell us what's going on in Israel. What's what's the deal? Well, it, it seems like we are going through what I call mass formation psychosis. I mean, really, what we are witnessing today is um, deception in levels we've never seen before, and the sheer chaos that is now part of almost every every part of our society. Look, as you all know, Israel went through several election rounds. Ever since uh, 2019, um, we had actually throughout COVID four different election rounds in which no one had a decisive victory. But way before that, let me take you all the way back to 2013 when Netanyahu's defense minister was Ehud Barak, who is a a very decorated general in Israeli military, the chief of staff. And he was also the most failed prime minister in our history that was there for, I think, a year and a half only. Now, Ehud Barak was there as the defense minister of Netanyahu. Something happened to him between 2013 and 2016. We believe it had to do with being compromised by ways of visiting Jeffrey Epstein too many times. And, oh yeah, uh, he's uh, he's on the record record dozens of times. And uh, you know that anyone that visited that island or anyone who visited his mansion in New York actually later on was compromised and now could be used by whatever it is, whether it's the globalists, the big families, or some... um, Uh, intelligence uh, organizations, whether it's America. I'm not sure what it is, but I do know one thing. Something snapped, something happened. And from 2016, we start hearing from that guy words and phrases that are very weird, such as, we are on the brinks of becoming dictatorship. We are about to no longer exist as democracy. Netanyahu is going to bring Israel to a disaster. Stuff that, you know, this guy was the defense minister of Netanyahu for all those years. Something happened. Someone is using him to remove one of the best prime ministers we ever had in in, in our modern uh, state of Israel. And so what happened is that from 2016, he started studying writings of anarchists that wrote books on how to eventually create some sort of revolution and walking on the brinks of almost um, breaking the law or or civil uh, uh, unrest and all of these things. Eventually, in 2019, 
when he saw that the political constellation in Israel is so fragile, he decided to move forward and he created a movement that is called the Black Flags uh, Movement. People standing with black flags saying it's the end of the world for us if Netanyahu is still the prime minister. Now, all of that while, and you'll see later on tonight, the similarities, while literally framing Netanyahu as a criminal and sowing, we call it in Hebrew, sowing um, five different criminal charges against him that all of them so far were proved wrong and... Wait, um, I, I have to ask you a question. Yeah. Are, are you talking about Trump? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, you... Okay, so, so you're also learning from us something. Yeah, and so... So the first phase was to demonize and criminalize Netanyahu. Second phase is to create instability in the streets. And the third phase, wow. the third phase is to touch the things that nobody ever dared to touch in the Israeli society. There are some three sacred things for Israelis are these. One... Families that lost their children in the military, the, the bereavement, you know. Um, family who lost their families in, uh, members in the Holocaust. These are the things you don't touch. And the second thing is the Hippoc Hippocratic uh, mm -hmm. oath. oath. Doctors suddenly are joining the protest and leaving everything behind, all the patients. They, they postpone, uh, you know, operations and medical procedures and just leave their offices and go to, to protest. And the third thing, causing the Israeli military, which is the melting pot of the Israeli society, mm -hmm. causing the military to become a side and to pressure the government not to do things that the, gov the elected government was, you know, elected for. These are the three things you don't do. And so Barack is now leading like a false messiah. A whole group of people who are the elite, the most educated, the most sophisticated, and the most wealthiest people in Israel. People who have nothing to lose. He is leading them into convincing the less educated, the simple people, convincing them that they are wrong. It's not only that, they're, they're actually saying this is a revolution where the elite is standing out against a government supported by the majority. It's very strange. Normally it's the opposite. Normally it's, it's the, lows, the lower levels of society that is rising up against the elite. This is the opposite. And ladies and gentlemen, what we're watching is... Ever since January, when the government was sworn in, we see demonstration, we see um, uh, chaos in the streets, and we see um, active people, uh, active in, in, in literally causing Israel to look bad all around the world. So that's what we have right now. It's interesting because biblically, the only time Israel is going to have clear mind and not not following wrong people, it's the time when Jesus will come back. We know that. Mm -hmm. Until then, we know from the scriptures that Israel will always follow the wrong person. At this point, we have a big chunk of society that is holding this Ehud Barak almost as a, f a false messiah, mm -hmm. in a way. They don't think he's a false messiah, but shortly they will find out that he has nothing to offer, and it's all just slogans. So, chaos and deception, the media is on their side, but the people, the people don't buy it. And there is still a majority of the Israelis that is not convinced. And when I was watching some interviews about the situation, one of the experts, she said, look, the elite, those educated, sophisticated people, they, they're the easiest to, de to, to deceive. Why? Because their guards are down because they think they know everything. Those that are not the elite, their guards are always up because they always are afraid that someone is, is out there to deceive them. And, and that's what we see right now in Israel. You see people that are super educated and you have no idea mm -hmm. how in the world do you say things like that when yeah. you know that the opposite is exactly the truth. 
So this is deception yeah. and chaos. I don't think they will win. I think that I know the end of the story. But what we're watching right now is just the beginning. And it's not only in Israel, as we will see this evening. It is a phenomena that we're about to see all around the world, especially as we get closer and closer yeah. to your elections. So somebody may be asking the question, why are we starting with Israel? Why are we even talking about Israel? And that would be a good question for you to ask if you're not aware of the, um, frankly, the accuracy of the Bible. Uh, before Christ can return in the second coming, I'm not talking the rapture, the second coming, uh, the Bible requires, scriptures require that there is a active living state, uh, a reborn state of Israel. And so since May 14th, 1948, Israel has been a nation for the second time. This is important. That's why what Amir is talking about is something that we can look at through the lens of Bible prophecy and at least come to this understanding. Hey, wow. Number one, Israel is in existence today. That's a huge point. Number two, we have seen Israel's rise on the world scene to have one of the strongest economies, one of the strongest currencies, and most of the Nobel Prize winners in the world have been Jews. They are a people that God is awakening, and Ezekiel tells us that God would awaken them even in their unbelief, which is amazing because it's also the book of Ezekiel that tells us that at a time when Israel seems to be uh, very successful or very, very prosperous or very, very much at peace, the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 tells us that during that time of perceived safety, uh, they're going to be attacked. And the Bible's very clear in names the nations that will be attacking Israel. Now, uh, is that near? We don't know, but we've never been this close, that's for sure, to the fulfillment of the Ezekiel 38 battle. Uh, that to me is very thrilling because there's a lot of great scholars that place the Ezekiel 38 battle just uh, in the opening moments, so to speak, uh, of the tribulation period. Some say it's just before the tribulation period. I don't care. <laughs> the point is we're talking about it today in the 21st century with Bible open and Israel is in a state right now of almost consuming itself. Sound familiar, mm -hmm. by the way? A nation eating itself. By the way, it's the same players. I mean, they've got different names, but it's the same playbook agenda that we've been experiencing in the United States. Oh, by the way, it's the same playbook agenda that is happening or has happened in Brazil. It's happening in other countries. Same playbook, same thing. What Amir just outlined is a very, very trifecta type of tactic uh, which is to sow discord among the brethren and to create lawlessness and to hyper escalate uh, the, 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 the space between the haves and the have nots. In other words, disunity in a very powerful way. Satan loves that, by the way. And he does it to your family, he does it to your business, and he does it to your country. And Israel's going through that. And so that leads us to Israel's neighborhood. Before that, I would, a lot of you are hearing about the judicial reform in Israel, which is the reason why all of it, that's baloney. The, the, the judicial reform is the last thing they are hanging on to as why, are we, why is it that we are going out to create the same chaos that we already talked about in 2020, in 2021, 2022. The judicial reform is something that we are proposing only from January of 2023. So all the plotting and the planning had nothing to do with it. They wanted to oust Netanyahu years ago for the same reason that they just don't want a conservative to lead the country. They want the globalist agenda. They don't, they don't want Israel to be a Jewish and a democratic country. They want Israel to be a democratic country on their own terms only, which is not exactly a de democracy. Because if the majority of the Israelis voted for Netanyahu, 64 seats in the parliament of 120, that is a majority. That's democracy. They have to acknowledge that the, the, the majority wants him as prime minister. They don't accept it. So who is a democratic and who is a non-democratic here? Now the last thing I want you to know, 
the Supreme Court, which is what happens also in many other countries around the world, the Supreme Court in Israel in the last 35 years went through a judicial revolution where it assumed power that no Supreme Court on planet Earth in no country has, such as we have the principle of reasonableness, which means there is the law, but if something doesn't sound reasonable to us, we will strike that law. What do you mean reasonable? You packed it with liberals. What's reasonable for a liberal may not be reasonable for a conservative. But since only liberals are there and you blocked any access from any uh, conservative to be elected as Supreme Court judge, of course you will always strike laws of a conservative country, uh, conservative government. So what we are trying to do for the first time in the history of Israel, 64 seats are of conservatives. And therefore, now we can finally change this very, very weird system that became a monster in the last 34 years. All we want, by the way, is to get the system back to what it was 35 years ago. We're not creating anything new. Let's go back to what, when Israel had a government that functioned and a Supreme Court that uh, respected the government and only interpreted the law. Now in Israel, we don't have a constitution. We have basic laws. It was known until yesterday that no one touches the basic laws. Even now, we're talking about the Supreme Court saying that they can actually strike down even the basic laws. By the way, the Supreme Court acts by the power that it gets from a basic law. <laughs> so they get their power from a basic law and now they're saying they can strike and cancel basic laws. No one gave them the power and those anarchists are saying that unless the government will yield to the Supreme Court, pilots will not go to fly their planes. Um, special units will not, soldiers will not go to fight when, and, and we're, we have a war around the corner, just so you understand. And they started using doctors not, will not treat patients. Mm -hmm. All these things that were so sacred, no one would think for a minute that a doctor would leave his praxis, practice and just go to demonstrate and leave patients uh, that had the operation scheduled months ago. No one thought in his wildest dreams that's going to happen, but it is happening today. They lost their mind, and un unfortunately, we are watching it. So all this judicial reform thing, and, and your administration is getting all, all of the, um, all of the um, I guess, uh, st the, the, the pages that the protesters are writing, and it's, your administration is reading from them, lecturing to our own prime minister about how to deal with our own internal affairs. Nobody talks about what's going on in France. Nobody talks about what's going on in, 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 in the rest of Europe or in Africa or in Asia. No, they all want to talk about what's going on in Israel and how we should manage our own things. So I'm saying everyone needs to know where they belong and not to interfere in our own business. We know how to handle things. And now it's time to talk the about... Ama the, amazing, uh, the amazing thing, though, is, is the... Again, the global unity, if that's the right word, the, the global um, activities uh, are happening in nations yeah. at the same time. This uh, lawlessness that's yes. forming, but, and Jesus but, talked about that. But it's interesting because the people still have power. It will be less and less, but people still have power. What, what happened is there's a few globalist families that are controlling industrialists that are controlling politicians and the politicians are trying to control the people now sometimes they they do it sometimes they can't sometimes the people like in Israel are going out and vote for a conservative government and it drives them nuts so they ratchet up uh, their efforts and now they create deception in levels we've never seen and chaos and remember those two words deception and chaos we're going to talk about it later on it's a worldwide phenomenon. So right now, Israel is surrounded, it's always been surrounded uh, by a, a very hostile neighborhood. Yeah. One that, they can't stand each other, but they all agree on one thing, and let's destroy Israel and the right. Jew. And that is just heating up. There's a lot of activity. There's been a lot of interesting things going on regarding what you guys have had to do uh, with, with 
Iran. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to talk to that. Um, also, things that have gone down recently, things that are yet to happen regarding Hezbollah in southern Lebanon preparing, Hamas preparing. Uh, with, with the enemies of Israel, they are literally saying, church, they are literally saying right now, look at them. They're, they're going after themselves. They're attacking themselves. They're loving it. Uh, Iran is really loving what's happening in Israel. Uh, Syria is loving this. Uh, Hezbollah and Hamas, they're loving this, this unity, this, this uh, friction. Uh, it's times like that where your country is vulnerable. And we know from the Bible that uh, the scripture's clear regarding the formation of a coming attack. What do we know as of tonight well, First of all, today? thank God that the security and the safety of Israel does not depend on the Israeli military, but on the God of Israel. Yeah. Because right now we are very vulnerable, but the God of Israel is still in the business of sowing confusion in the camp of the enemy. Yep. So now, right now there's clashes in Lebanon among the Palestinians themselves. There's clashes in Lebanon between the factions of Hezbollah and the others. There's, fact, there's you know, fights in Syria, fights in Iraq, fights in Iran, fights in Yemen, fights in, in, in most of the Middle East. So this thing is slowing down their efforts, of course. But make no mistake, Iran has completed mm -hmm. its plan to surround Israel with hundreds of thousands of rockets and with tens of thousands of very well-trained militia forces. Some of them are recruited from Afghanistan, some from Pakistan, some are from Iraq, and some, of course, are the commanders are, are all Iranians. That's all around Syria, there are the Yemenites in the south, and there is Hezbollah in the north. So Iran has completed its preparation for a massive strike at the day that they are going to command their proxies to do it. Israel is now preparing for what we call preemptive strike. All of our forces are ready within a matter of hours, not days, not weeks, hours to strike both in Syria and Lebanon in a way that they will not be able to recover for weeks or months or maybe even years. We are in that help at that point. Tell them why. Why is it important for Israel to do such a thing? Well, you understand that you know, if we are not going to strike first, it will not end up well with us. And they're going to, of course, th what they want is to strike from all around at the same time. Yes. And Iran is afraid. You have to understand something. The Iranians are afraid of us. So much so that they create all their proxies away from Iran. So Israel will fight with the proxies and not go after yeah. them in Iran. You understand do, that? Do, do you guys, uh, do you, uh, for some younger people in the audience, the Soviet Union, so to speak, right? The Soviet Union made sure that it had what is known as satellite nations around it. The Soviet Union took over countries in Eastern Europe to be a buffer zone from NATO or from the West, okay? So Iran, trying, they want to destroy Israel, but they want to stay far enough away. So what they've done is that, frankly, they have pimped, they've pimped Syria and other, Amer rightly calls them proxies. Get someone else to do your dirty business. It's a lot safer for you. Make sense? Yes. That's what's going on yes. right now. And okay. Israel is ready to strike. But in order for us to strike in Iran, we need simultaneously to strike those proxies so they will not be able to attack Israel while most of our aircrafts are on their way to the most important uh, nuclear sites in Iran. Now you have to understand something. The Iranians are deceiving America and Europe and the whole world by saying that they're having an innocent nuclear program for civilian uh -huh. use. And I don't know if you remember, but a um, few years ago, Israel, in a very heroic Mossad operation, uh, stole the archive of the Iranian uh, nuclear program from a neighborhood of Tehran. And we exposed and we showed President yeah. Trump. We brought to President Trump all the yeah. proofs to show that there are multiple sites where they are still working on military program that the 
International Atomic Energy Agency doesn't even know about. So we expose them. The agency asked for explanations. The Iranians could not provide an explanation until recently. And in one of the visits to one of those sites, after, of course, they brushed and cleaned and, and you know, tried to remove all evidences, particles of uranium in 83% enrichment, which is weapon graded already, were found. Mm -hmm. So now they had to answer to that also. Iran right now has over a, um, over, um, a over 160 kilogram of 60% enriched uranium, which means that within a matter of few days, if they choose, because they have enough centrifuges in enough underground sites, if they choose, they can enrich it to a few kilograms of 90 to 95 percent enrichment, which is enough for three to five bombs already. They already have it. So Israel must stop them right here before they make that final move. And then that's it. You cannot, you cannot touch them anymore. Like, just like North Korea, nobody can touch them right now. Everybody's afraid of them right now. And this is it, folks. So, um, that's what we have with Syria now. America, America is, is on its way to a clash with Russia in the skies of Syria. I don't know if you know that, but quite a few incidents in the last few weeks happened that Russian MiGs and Sukhois were actually almost hitting American aircrafts on, in the skies yes. of Syria. Yes, that's right. And America is bracing for a massive attack of the Iranian proxies in Syria against U.S. forces. You, I mean, I don't understand how can your administration still talk with the Iranians when all they want to do is destroy you and all they do is plotting how to do it and when. And we're paying it's, for it. And you're paying for it, exactly. So this is going on in Syria. There is a lot that is going on in Lebanon as well, and Israel is, going, you know, is ready to do that. But I would be more concerned, and I think that's the next thing, to, from what is going on in the third ring of world events. If there is the Israel, and then there is the close, close borders of Israel, now we're talking about Europe and Africa, and stuff mm -hmm. is going on there that probably most of you don't even know. How many of you heard of the v Wagner Group? Mm -hmm. Good. Who are they? Mercenaries? Putin's private army, basically. If he wants to have soldiers killed and not, not you know, uh, register them as soldier killed, then send them. They're not registered anywhere. And ladies and gentlemen, the Wagner Group is in Syria, is in Libya, is across Africa, and it's also right now in Ukraine as well. And as of late, the agreement between the Wagner Group and Putin is that they will move to Belarus. And mm -hmm. everyone knows that it is Putin's strategy to threaten Poland and for the first time invade into a NATO member. And they started two days ago with helicopters yes. already invading into Polish airspace. And Listen to me, a war in Europe is going to intensify, yes. but while all eyes are on Europe, guess what's going on in Africa? I don't know if you can see, but there's a whole, uh, a whole belt in Africa, all the way from Sudan and Eritrea on the Red Sea to towards Senegal on the uh, uh, Atlantic, and you can clearly see one after another, countries are having military coup, and, and very, very unstable. The latest one is Niger. I don't know if you know Niger, north of Nigeria. Both are named after the Niger River, 2,600 uh, miles long river. And Niger was, was controlled by the French. That's why it's the French name. Nigeria by the British. That's why it's the British name. And Niger was a French colony and Niger I don't know if you follow me on Telegram, but on Telegram, how, I hope you all follow me on Telegram, but this, look, look what's going on with Niger. We're talking about the world 
Niger is considered the fourth largest exporter of uranium in the world and is responsible for approximately 25% of the supply of uranium to the nuclear power plants in European Union. And they just announced after the coup that they will not provide any more uranium to the Europeans. Not only that, Niger is on the way of energy pipes that are coming all the way from Nigeria towards Europe. And Europe is so thirsty and hungry for energy. Take a look from Nigeria all the way towards Europe. It crosses Niger and Niger is now closed. And now all those plans to get energy into Europe from that part of the world is blocked. And who is behind the Niger coup? The Wagner Group. You got that one right. They are already in Mali, which is left to Niger, and they are getting all the help that they need. Look, Putin just had a few days ago a whole conference with um, with uh, African uh, leaders. Take a look at this photo from that time. But I want you to see the tweet of the uh, Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Look how many countries participated in the Russia-Africa summit. Look how many. In fact, I would tell you, 90% of the African countries are now on the side of Russia. Yeah. And if that's not enough, the Saudis are now siding with Russia and China. The Emiratis that are buying your weapon are now on the side of doing business with Russia and China, you guys, without noticing, are losing grip of, on most of the world. And, and that is just the appetizer before what's going to happen within the United States as we get closer and closer to your election. So my, my point is, if you are being fed by your own media, which I call the media nights, if you're being fed by them that Ukraine is winning and Russia is losing and Putin is finished and this is it, it's far from being truth. Mm -hmm. It's far. You are now, I don't know if you know that, I don't know if you, you were told that your credit rate yep. was yeah, de downgraded. lower, downgraded. Okay? You have, you have more debt than any country I know of, per person that pays taxes is almost a quarter million dollars. Yeah, poor, we are per, the poorest tax. The American is the poorest person in the world on, on paper. We owe more than any other person in so, the world per person. So, so, so you understand that um, this is not a good place to start with. And, and what we are watching right now, we're watching... Uh, you know, uh, something that the media is trying to cover up and they will always show you what they want you to know, what they want you to think, what they want you to, to live by. They will hide the truth from you. This is a major thing that you need to understand. So I'm, you know, I, I think that tonight's uh, thread, if I will say, is deception and chaos that the world is going through. And all of that has been foretold. Mm -hmm. All of that has been prophesied. And we're not here to depress you. But we're here to encourage you that everything that the Bible said, the last days are... We started with that verse, perilous times. Mm -hmm. We are in the most perilous times this world is going, to, going, is going through in, in our lifetime. It's, it's quite amazing. Well, um, the next thing, we kind of hit on this, but we can touch on it a little bit more if need be, but we're looking at uh, the political parallels between Israel and America and, we, and the, yeah. the, the players behind all that. But before we talk on that, what I want to remind all of you about is that, and I'm, I'm thinking as a skeptic, you're probably thinking, oh, you know, what's he going to say? Or, um, you know, what else is he supposed to say? Well, never before in my lifetime, nor in the lifetime of what I have been able to research in world history, has so many global things have happening or underway simultaneously like they are now. And it seems as though the COVID experience heightened the matter. Um, what we go through now as a world 
all of a sudden, we're extremely small as a globe. If something happens in Canada, you know about it and, and on the other side of the globe in a matter of moments. When it comes to the economies, when it comes to the defense, when it comes to communications and news, it is not by chance, I submit to you, that all of the news outlets globally say the same thing, unless they're very bold, independent news agencies. The governments, the way they're acting, the bad players, the way they're protesting, the threat of wars and rumors of wars. Amir talked about the United States losing, lost, it's gone. Our influence in North Africa is gone, never to be regained. But the same thing is happening in the, in the Middle East and specifically not only Israel, obviously, but when you look at what America has surrendered, when you, go, when you look at Iraq and you look at Afghanistan, remember the media told us that uh, Bush, which I'm not a fan of, of the Bush uh, clan, uh, they're terrible. You can look at their whole generations. They're, they're not good. But one thing that is sad is that the, the nation began to cry out, Bush lied, kids died, or Bush lied and people died, uh, talking about our soldiers. Do uh, you remember hearing this? Blood for oil. Blood for oil. Our, our, our soldiers' blood for us to get oil which is one of the stupidest things ever said. Because number one, we don't need Iraqi oil. We never did. And on top of it, we don't get a drop of Iraqi oil. We don't do that. We don't have it. We don't get it. In fact, the Bush administration signed an agreement that regarding the Gulf Wars that we would not take a drop of their oil because it wasn't about oil. Was it about regime change? I don't know. But I know God knows. And I believe it was one big step forward to the dissolving or the degrading of the United States. Then you come into Afghanistan. And that is probably, quite possibly, the, certainly one of the biggest blunders in American history. Um, but for us to lose blood in Afghanistan and to lose $80 billion worth of equipment that we left there, it turns out that ISIS... And uh, Muslim terrorists, they have their favorite, their favorite vehicle now is because we surrendered, and that is the Ford F-350 pickup. It's the terrorist pickup of choice. How's that? Isn't that great? Uh, it is a great truck, but, um, but the amazing thing is, you may or may not know this, but when the U.S. under Joe Biden, Biden surrendered Afghanistan... Uh, we abandoned the largest concentration of lithium in the world. Did you know that? Lithium. How many of you have battery-powered cars? Okay, stuff like that. Lithium this, lithium that. Lithium is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. It's very precious. Afghanistan is basically made out of lithium. And we're gone, but China's there now. It's okay, don't worry. China's got dominance over the lithium in Afghanistan. They, they didn't ask, by the way, they, they moved in. They didn't ask the Afghans. They told them, uh, we're going we're gonna to be marketing your lithium from here on out. And so America, and I thank God that our citizenship is in heaven as Christians, the United States is on a radical, steep uh, decline. I believe that's prophetically necessary. I believe the United States has got to be weakened to the point that we learn from Ezekiel and Zechariah that the United States will not help Israel in its time of trouble. Israel will be completely abandoned and alone when that Ezekiel battle takes place. But just know this. I do not believe that the United States is making mistakes. I don't think we are making bad choices. I believe our nation is making exactly the choices it wants to make. I believe what's happening in our country on the global scene is actually not us losing. It's actually a plan to bring in or to at least prepare the globe for a one world global 
mm-hmm. governing an empire, which the Bible says has to be in place and will be in place leading up to the tribulation period. Mm-hmm. A global government, a global governance. And we're seeing movements of that regarding the economy and regarding digital currency. And um, it's quite remarkable. So there's nothing that tomorrow's news can announce to you that should surprise you if you know your Bible. You need to remember that when we get to the, the, the end of this, which we need to watch the clock because we I need know. about 25 minutes for the, for last, the last point. I know. So you talk right, the rest so, of the uh, time. Let, let's t- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we can talk about the, the parallels between what's going on in America and what's going on in Israel when it comes to prosecuting leaders for, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if you know, but uh, this is, uh, these are the violations that Trump is now being accused for, okay? Number one, count one, conspiracy to defraud the United States. Number two, conspiracy to abstract and an official proceeding. Number three, abstraction of an attempt to abstract an official proceeding, and number four, conspiracy against rights. All of this, these are new allegations. They're not yeah. the ones regarding taxes or paying someone to not talk. Or, or These are new things, and this can put someone in jail for over 50 years. I don't know if you understand that. Yeah. Now, America, unlike the rest of the world, your constitution, I don't know if you know that, is allowing a president to even be the president from jail. I don't know if you know that. Yes, and it happened once in your history, but um, in, in the 1800s. But I do want you to know, it's the same thing, only in Israel it started first. We, I see the parallels. I see the same thing. It's the globalists that are detesting. And I'm not here to vouch for any specific candidate. I'm here to tell you that it's the same spirit it's the same players, it's the same mm-hmm. agenda, and it's the same method and mode of operation. You understand that? First, what you do is v- v- vilify yes. and, and, and criminalize and, and demonize someone. Cause everyone, and now you, you also control the media, so the media will help only show the bad things about that person. Then you bring criminal allegations, which means now your justice system will have to not just operate by what people feel, but now it will put him behind bars because he did break the law. And before you know it, they're going to cancel the will of the majority And cause the majority to get used to the fact that something higher than we the people exist in this world. And and they will promise you stability and prosperity. They will promise you peace and safety. All of these things. Just give up on the person whom you want to lead your country. And I'm telling you... It didn't work for them with Netanyahu. The actual trial is a farce. And actually, we love watching it because it exposes their real motives. All the allegations were false. All the witnesses that the prosecution brought are actually testifying in favor of Netanyahu. They don't know what to do anymore. And so all of these cases, one after the other, are falling apart. You guys became smarter. Why? In your case, they waited two and a half years with things that happened two and a half years ago to bring those allegations now just as the campaign begins. And the prosecutor, as far as I remember, said yesterday that he is expecting a speedy trial. Which means (laughs) we are not going to let it be dragged. We're going to do it and do it fast. That, that would be a miracle because we've not had a speedy trial in this country for about 250 years. So that, well, I'm, that's something. <laughs> well, all I'm trying to say is forget about names here. It's the system. It's how they do things. It's the same mode of operation. Yeah. It's the same agenda. And eventually it's all about causing the people to come under what they want you to think and how they want you to think. And they will try to give you incentives 
and they will try to make you feel good about that option of not having the one you, wh whom you want. It's not going to end up well. And the way for them to achieve that is if you're not going to surrender, there will be chaos. There will be chaos mm -hmm. in levels you've not seen. Now, I don't know if you're watching lately what's going on in um, American big cities right now. But looting has become the new norm. It's new, new Everywhere shopping. all across America from Philadelphia and New York on the east all the way to San Francisco and Los Angeles on the west across the country. I get those videos. I, I don't post them anymore because I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. Okay. But ladies and gentlemen, chaos yeah. and, 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 and deception, it, these are tools that the yeah. enemy wants to uh, use. And, and we talked about it earlier today. There is really no world leader nowadays. I mean, you guys, when was the last time you looked at your president? Or not even that. Look at the, <laughs> the leader of your majority in, or minority in the Senate. You know, minority. someone who fell asleep you know, during the speech. <laughs> Look, the whole world is watching what's going on in the American politics. And if that is the leader of the free world, we're in trouble right now. And therefore, there is a vacuum. There is a lack of leadership. And I believe that this is the, the fertile ground for the, mm -hmm. for the chaos that will give birth to the world that will surrender Yes. to the rise of the Antichrist. That's why this is so important because of the timing. Israel, for example, the, the religious zealots of Israel in Judaism right now, they want a temple built. They want it now. They want it badly. Think about that. See, what does that have to do with anything? A leaderless world always throughout human history produces a dictator. Dress them up however you want. Where there's a leaderless world, something happens... And the populace will install a leader. If he likes it or not, they're going to make him a leader. Well, in this case, the Bible is very clear in the book of Daniel that there's going to be a man that is seemingly insignificant that is going to rise up out of a confederacy of leaders, 10 leaders. The Bible says 10 leaders. And out of those 10 leaders, there's one arises that is called the 11th leader or the 11th horn, the 11th king. And so he puts down uh, the three major leaders, he subdues them, and he takes control, the Bible says, by prosperity and by peace. He deceives the world by prosperity and peace. Think about it. You are wired in such a way, humanly speaking, all you want to do is be left alone and be able to do what you want to do. That's why people say, I don't want to get involved. Why? Because I just want to do what I want and be at peace. If you have money and if you have peace, Satan has known throughout the ages, if you can just give that pablum or drug to humans, you can get them to do anything. And right now, we're in a nation where we still are lacking because we've got people that have settled for a little bit of money just to keep them satisfied. Lower your standards and your pursuits in life and just exist. And we're ripe for a totalitarian leader. The world, if they get scared enough, they will say, okay, come in. Look, don't, don't fool yourself. The United States said, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll exchange our birthright for some porridge, for some food. And what we did was we exchanged our constitution for freedom, or I should say safety, sorry, safety. We gave up our freedom for safety. And look how that turned out for us. That was an incredible destruction of the U.S. Constitution. And what safety? It was it, the whole, now the data, which you're not surprised. It was, we were scammed. Give us, give us all this information. You go sit in your house and stay there for a while. Shut down everything. And oh, by the way, we'll take away your Constitution to keep you safe. 
That is the hallmark of, to, of totalitarian movements. That's going to happen in the world. And the Bible says the Antichrist, this one will rise up and have all, the, all of the answers. Hmm. And it's very interesting because he's going to have demonic powers. The Bible says so. So I don't believe in that. Well, you will. And the power is mostly manifested, primarily deception is key. It's key in military operations. It's key in politics is to deceive. And the greatest victory of all, if you're a military, is to get your opponent to believe that they're not at war. So if I was China right now, or a globalist, I would be watching America and I would say, wait, 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 wait. Don't press any red buttons. Don't blow anything up. At this rate, as America implodes from the inside, we'll just, we'll just walk in and, and go to Disneyland. We'll just take it over. Just let America keep doing what it's doing to itself. And right now, you could say the same thing about Israel. Just let Israel keep doing what it's doing to itself. This is a prime time for a world leader to arise. Mm -hmm. His origins are mysterious. But I think most, most of that is because he's driven by demonic entities, demonic powers. And so you and I are living at a time where we look around and we can point to what the Bible is clear on, and that is manifestations of at least confusion. Where does, the, where does confusion come from, people? Satan. Satan, not from God. Our God is a God of order and logic and reason. Satan is, is confusion personified. Notice today around the world, unexplained, all around the world, gender confusion. It's demonic in nature. Satan is attacking young people today. Satan is attacking, he, listen, he's, he's, he's like a lion, which people who have been hurt or offended or molested, they're vulnerable. So where does the wolf go or the lion go first? A lion, a wolf, will always travel on the perimeter of a herd and tear away the weak and the hurting. So you're seeing a, an attack, this area of human trafficking. I find it fascinating. The book of Revelation says that in the last days, there'll be those who will traffic in the souls of men. I find that fascinating. Book of Revelation. Uh, again, dishonoring and destroying you and I as humans, being created in the image of God. So, no, we'll, we're going to change the image of people who have been created in the image of God. We're going to re-engineer them. Where are they? Think about the demonic agenda of people who ought to mind their own business, but instead they're, they're vehemently committed to staying up all day and night to figure out how they can either get legislation passed or somehow pollute your school board or, or change your mind to medically molest your child and you be okay with it. I submit to you today that according to world history, that's demonic. It's happened throughout history in paganism. There's nothing new under the sun, Solomon said, and it's true. Something's going on. It's happening in so many areas. And you've got to ask yourself, are we really in the last days? The Bible says we're in the last days, but do you believe that? No, listen, I want, don't say yes, don't say no, just think. The Bible says we're in the, we're, that we're in the last days, and then John says we're, the last hour. we're in the last hour. And there's indicators as to what that is. Deception on a level never before seen. Stop and think about that. Do you believe the Bible's true? If you do, then you believe that there's going to be a time of deception that is so deceiving that... There will be no way to be protected from it except and only if you're a Christian. You know how like you would take a vaccine to protect yourself from a virus? At least that was the plan. Imagine ingesting the truth of God's word to protect you from the outside spirits that are trying to invade. If you're vacant on the inside, you are vulnerable to the enemy. And so when we talk about deception, what do you think? What do you think that looks like? Some little, uh, you know, smokescreen show? Somebody telling a really fanciful lie? 
What do you think deception looks like? We've gotten some hints. We, we know now that what we're looking at on YouTube or television or a movie or a documentary or a report, you have no confidence that what you're looking at is actually true. A couple years ago, during Shark Week, the producers of Shark Week did an AI fabrication of a shark situation and never told the Shark Week global audience that it was a fraud, that it was fake. They did a little trick. And it angered so many people that when it came out that what they showed was false. And nobody knew it was fake. Well, you fast forward that with a hyper agenda. And that's what Amir and I want to talk to you last, is what has happened this week and last week in our congressional hearings in Washington, D.C. I want all of, you, all of you to listen. There have been congressional hearings these last, this last week in Washington, D.C. regarding UAPs. How many of you are aware of the congressional hearings of UAPs? Raise your hand. Be honest. Don't, don't pretend. Look around. Keep your hand up. Look around. What's the percentage? What are we looking at in this sanctuary? Are we looking at maybe 25, 50 yeah. people? Some of them don't even know what UAP is, so maybe you should tell them. That's why they don't. Unidentified atmospheric phenomenon. Okay. Now, how many of you? Now, now. All right. Roll, uh, roll the first tape. Okay. Several months ago, my office received a protected disclosure from Eglin Air Force Base indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. Uh, we asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as, long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that I am not able to attach to any human capability either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico. And when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, Again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side. And you can go back to your history of things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar on the aircraft when it tried to do it. And the only way we could see it is passively, which is how he got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. 
And, and how should we think about forecraft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another, um, in a diamond? It, it, in all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT flare system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system, and, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. It just goes to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a U of AP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone. Because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people. And that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Okay, so this is going on, and it's involving now reports. Uh, others are starting to rise to the occasion. England, uh, reports by military personnel are coming forward uh, in light of these hearings, and in Canada. Um, what, are we, what are we talking about? There, you, you'll, maybe you'll hear it or not. We had too much information. We had to cut it down, and we're going to be brief because we've got more to show you. And, uh, Entities on radar being tracked both by military uh, and civilian, it depends, and uh, extremely uh, high speed. Uh, and then going to st uh, steady state, zero speed, yet maintaining altitude. And then vanishing, and then reappearing in another location, one officer reports, that's a military officer reports, 60 miles away from his aircraft. It was 50 feet from his cockpit as he was flying, as it was next to him. And the next thing it shows up, 60 miles away in another location. You're going to hear testimony from these guys in a moment that everything that they witnessed defies physics as we know it. You're going to hear them mention non-human origins or non-human activity. You're going to hear them talk about biologics. And this information now has been required to come forward. And it's, it's very volatile stuff. And in fact, one of the congressmen, the leads, they're asking for a special meeting. And they said, we look forward to the special meeting with these that are bringing this eyewitness testimony if they can just stay safe until we can meet. Wow. So something's up. So you would normally think, UFOs, I knew it. I knew it from other planets. All this stuff. Wow. Uh, Fox Mulder was right. X-Files, yes. Uh, George Jetson, I get it. And, um, and yet I think that what is truly behind all this stuff is what has been truly behind everything. And that is the fact that you and I live in the middle of two worlds. And that we are literally dealing with what are spiritual entities that are demonic in nature that according to Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 are powers that dwell in the atmosphere principalities and powers okay. of the atmosphere. Satan has a nickname in the Bible, and it's the prince of the power of the atmosphere. I find that interesting. I do not, for the record, I do not believe in creatures from other worlds. I do not believe in other planets. I don't believe in these creatures having, are, are visiting us from other uh, places. I believe that when the Bible says deception so big that if it were possible, even my very elect would be deceived, which means it's impossible for the elect to be deceived. The, the differing point is the Holy Spirit 
will protect you against deception. Why? It's going to be so amazing that you're going to be, that that those who believe it will believe it wholesale. And I believe right now with what's happening, you again throw it into everything we're talking about. Timing, timing. Why now? Why now? All of a sudden, now there's this stuff about these these cr- creatures appearing or these things going on. I believe it's demonic demons, fallen angels, because you have no idea, nor do I, what a fallen angel is. You don't know what they can produce. You don't know what they can create. Well, Jack, we've got, we have UFO uh, materials that have been collected from, from crash sites. I understand that. That has been scientifically tested. I just believe the origin is an act of deception by Satan to get people duped. Yeah. Want to make a comment? And we'll I just, to, uh, we'll to, you know, God created a beautiful world, perfect world, and then he said it is good. It was good. And then the moment men began to multiply on yeah. the face of the earth and daughters of, uh, were born to them, that the son of God, the sons, the sons of, of God. God, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And later on, we see both in Second uh, Peter, uh, chapter two, uh, and in Jude, ch- uh, verse six. We see first of all in Second Peter, chapter two, verse four. It says regarding that, and. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned and cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And then in in Jude, verse 6, it says the following thing. It says, um, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode. And habitation abode. exactly and so this but, is the place so but why it says that they left these sons of god referred to in genesis 6 mm-hmm. when after human flesh how do we know that jude and peter they tell us in the new testament that they left their domain where they are supposed to reside and their damnation according to the bible was they went after human flesh exactly. we're talking about things that we don't have any knowledge of outside the scripture people We are now entering an age of deception that you better know your Bible Mm -hmm. and don't listen to people. Don't listen to us. Read your Bible. Okay, next clip. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank you all very much. Um, Have you faced any retaliation or reprivals for any of your testimony or anything on these lines? Yeah, uh, I have to be careful what I say in detail because there is an open uh, whistleblower reprisal investigation on my behalf, and I don't want to compromise that investigation by providing anything that may uh, uh, help provide somebody information. But it was very brutal and uh, very unfortunate, some of the tactics they used to um, hurt me both professionally and, and personally, to be quite frank. Yeah. It's very unfortunate, as they say, when you're over the target, that's when they do the most firing at you. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think, that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Maybe in a, um, if we could... Get it, get in a um, confidential area skiff. We could talk about that, but unfortunately, um, we were denied access to the skiff, and that's very unfortunate in this in this scenario. Okay, a skiff is a uh, is a room. It's a, it's a, a a a structure whereby there is it's impossible to commu- to communicate out or in. It's where members of Congress, members of the Senate, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, clandestine operations, CIA, uh, DSS, certain things like that will go into a skiff. It's an acronym, but it simply means a place where you can talk about something that is so classified and you have absolute full assurance that 
there's no way of that getting outside. Uh, that's important because both we and the Russians and the Chinese have the capability of listening through walls, listening from space. They can actually listen to your conversation. We do it. We've done it for 20 years from space based on frequency. Satellite technology monitoring frequency, break down the frequency into words. We can hear somebody talking in Red Square from 250 miles above the earth. It's very common. Those of you who've been in the military and some intelligence knows this. They were denied. This, this congressional hearing was denied by the Biden administration to have those facilities provided to them, which is very unnerving. Uh, but you heard him say that for him coming forward with this information, his life has, has been uh, threatened. And he knows. He said, do you know anybody? And he said, yes. Well, that's all going to come out in what we now know that congressman has called for a, a gathering and a meeting. He's creating his own safe space so these guys can testify. This is a big deal. It's not just him. It's a whole lot of them. Um, next slide, which is number three, I believe. Mr. Graves, again, I'd like to know, um, how do you know that these were not our aircraft? Some of the behaviors that we saw in a working area, we would see these objects uh, being at 0.0, .0 Mach, that's zero airspeed, over a certain pieces of the ground. So what that means, just like a river, if you throw a bobber in, it's going to float downstream. These objects were staying completely stationary in category four hurricane winds. These same objects would then accelerate to supersonic speeds, 1.1, 1.2 Mach. Uh, and they would do so in very erratic and, and quick behaviors that we don't, I don't have an explanation for. Okay. Have you spoken to um, commercial military pilots um, that have seen these off of our East Coast? I have. Okay. Um, Mr. Favor, I noticed that um, um, in the Tic Tac video, uh, it's Tic Tac like the candy, not Tic Tac like the uh, Chinese Communist uh, app. That's correct. Yes, sir. I just want to make that because my daughter uh, corrected me on that and called me a boomer and said, hey, boomer, and I said, no, baby, it's Tic Tac like the candy. You're going to have to just look it up. Mr. Favor, what, what astonished you the most about the, the flight capabilities of these Tic Tac, very briefly? Uh, the performance. Absolute performance. It was... And, okay. and you're, you're not aware of any other objects that anybody in the world has, in this world, that has those capabilities? No, I think it's far beyond, actually, our material science that we currently possess. Are you aware of any other reconnaissance platforms that have tracked or recorded the Tic Tac's maneuvers, maybe the NORAD system or any of the others? I am not. Mm, fascinating, isn't it? Mm. So he's a U.S. Navy commander um, saying it like it is, saying it like what he and others have experienced. Again, I think it's demonic. You want to make comments? You know, it's very demonic, and you, you, you better understand that the, in the time of the tribulation, even more demonic manifestations than, yes. than that are going to happen. Read chapter 9, the first, first uh, six verses of chapter 9 of, of Revelation, and you'll see Satan is going to obviously open that abyss, in, and there will be smoke that is rising from there. And the, the Bible says, from that smoke, in verse 3, it says... And then out of that smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God. Remember the 144,000 had the seal of God on their forehead. They were commanded not to touch them. So all the people that will be uh, sinners not repenting throughout the tribulation are going to experience a demonic attack in physical uh, uh, manifestation. And, and the Bible says in those days men will seek death and will not find it and they will desire to die and death will flee from them. 
So what I, I, what I, I think it's the grace of God that is at least allowing us nowadays in 2023 to see that demonic manifestation in physical uh, form exists in this world and it will come and bite those that are not following the Lord in ways that they wish they could, they, they died and they wouldn't be able to. This is something that is biblical. It's not from other planets. It's, not, it's demonic, satanic, diabolic from the pits of hell or from those, you know, um, places uh, in the heavenlies where he still has some domain. And we're talking about something that the world wants you to get used to. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe even our rapture will be explained as some sort of a UFO invasion or that took us away. I don't know what thing they will come up with. But that same thing that they will live with and get used to will eventually come and bite them and they will wish that they could die. So what if curiously, just, just pretending, and I, I, while Amir was talking, I was thinking, you know, what is some poor person tuning into this right now? <laughs> or maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're saying, um, I don't know what in the world this has to do with anything. <laughs> and it... It just made me think that the church throughout its history used to be the epicenter to inform a community, to inform a culture or a a village or a town or a city, the church. East coast of the United States, uh, the roads are nuts back there. The older the older the areas you go to, the crazier the roads. Why? Because they all lead to one pinpoint part of the town a church and there used to be a church there and in Europe that's certainly the way it is if you ever get lost in Europe just follow the road and you're going to come to a a town square where there's a church and you should be able to hear and talk about this information as we're giving it to you tonight right here so I think it's very appropriate that we talk about this here because if you don't talk about it you will talk about it watching a movie. Notice that the Marvel characters, these supernatural people, they're box office thrillers. Why? Because we some, somehow we love it. And it's okay if it's a movie. But are you telling me that it's possible, maybe, that these demonic entities and powers would seek some form of medium by which we learn or we're entertained, even to the point of even invading a pulpit where the Bible says, watch out, because Satan's got the power to transform himself into an image of light and can actually become ministers disguised, AI, or cloaked, You say, that's crazy. I agree. Absolutely crazy. Above my pay grade. But I got to tell you, what if the world, with things like Stonehenge, crop circles, Easter Island, those figures, pyramids, what if something comes along and starts describing or defining or, or saying, yeah, hi, everyone. We were making contact with you. We did all that stuff. We've come back to see how you're doing or something. Now you say, Jack, you're nuts. I'm just playing with you. I'm just taking from what you sit in the theater and watch. What if there is a real Satan with a real agenda? And while we're in this world chasing our tail to either get power or get a dollar, we're being deceived by not paying attention. That's why we're showing you this tonight. That's why it's important. It's breaking news around the world what's happening in America right now regarding these hearings. It's possible people will be murdered for coming forward. Because we, we didn't show you the whole thing. Companies, these guys are exposing 
corporations and CEOs by name who are working with an an unknown government group in the United States that have no accountability to the Senate or the Congress. A world unto itself. These guys have, whatever's gone on, these guys and a lot of military personnel have now come forward willing to die for what they're sharing right now. It's not a joke. But I do believe it's part of the grand deception. And God is, you said the word grace. God is allowing us to talk about it tonight. And I don't want to get into this. Don't, let's not get into this other stuff about what people have seen in Nevada, what people have seen in England, what people have seen in Mexico. I don't want to talk about those things. It's not the right no, place. No. <laughs> Why? Because we, we want to end with this. Last clip. So my first question, I have several questions, and I'll, I, if we can just be quick on these first two, I'm going to ask each of you the same question, um, and then I'll get to each of you individually. Uh, the first one, when you reported your experiences with the UAP, did any of you face any repercussions with your superiors, yes or no? No. No. I've actually never seen anything personally, believe it or not. So. All right. Um, and then do, do you believe there's an active disinformation campaign within our government to deny existence of UAPs, yes or no? I don't have an answer to that. As previ previously stated publicly, yes. I think previously with like Project Blue Book, yes, but currently I don't speak for the United States government. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions for Mr. Graves. Um, what percentage of UAP sightings in your belief go unreported by our pilots? This is an approximation based off of my personal experience speaking with a number of pilots, but I would estimate we're somewhere near 5% reporting perhaps. So like 95% basically don't report seeing UAPs. That's just my personal estimate. Um, in the incident off Virginia Beach, do you believe the Navy took the danger to your aircraft seriously after it was reported? Absolutely. Um, a few questions for Mr. Favor. As an expert naval aviator, have you ever seen an object that looked and moved like the Tic Tac UAP? No. Did the Tic Tac UAP move in such a way that defied the laws of physics? The way we understand them, yes. Many dismiss UAP reports as classified weapons testing by our own government, but in your experience as a pilot, does our government typically test advanced weapon systems right next to multi-million dollar jets without informing our pilots? No, we have test ranges for that. It took over 15 years for your encounter with the Tic Tac to be declassified. Do you feel there was a good reason to prevent lawmakers from having access to this footage? No, I just think it was ignored when it happened, and it just sat somewhere in a file. Never got reported. In a drawer. It happens a lot up here. <laughs> Shocker. Um, Mr. Gresh, uh, a couple of questions for you, too, sir, this morning. Um, what percentage of UAPs do you feel are adequately investigated by the U.S. government, of the 5% that are reported? <laughs> um, I can only speak for uh, my personal leadership over at NGA. I tried to look at every report that came through that I could mm -hmm. triage, so... Do you believe that officials at the highest levels of our national security apparatus have unlawfully withheld information from Congress and subverted uh, our oversight authority? There are certain elected leaders that had more information that I'm not sure what they've shared with certain Gang of Eight members or et cetera, but uh, certainly uh, I would not be surprised. Okay. You say that the government is in possession of potentially non-human spacecraft. Based on your experience and extensive conversations with experts, do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent extraterrestrials? Something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, Listen do we carefully. have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you and skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, 
So, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield back. I, I, I hope that guy lives to tomorrow. So did you hear her question? Uh, has material been discovered or is it being looked at? He said yes. Alien or non-earthly non materials. Metals, plastics, whatever they are, composites. He says yes. This guy's under oath. And he's representing a whole lot of people that have come together to be these, to make this announcement. You, did you hear her ask him about the nature of these pilots that, what, that piloted this craft uh, in, in a post-crash environment? What did you guys find? What, what did you see? And his... Very uh, academic, very sterling. By the way, he's got uh, his many degrees, but his, he's uh, a physicist. I'm not sure if it's an astrophysicist or applied physics is his expertise. It doesn't matter. He's a very, very highly regarded uh, man. He said that regarding himself and his colleagues and all of those who are involved in the project, the project, have all come to the same conclusion that we are studying, we are looking at uh, biologics apart from the device, right? So you've got parts of a, of a, of a machine, but mangled up in that or somehow presented in that wreckage are biologics. So you would think, without Bible knowledge, oh my gosh, this is serious. I mean, these are real entities from other planets. These are, how far do they travel? What do they know? I kid you not, I heard a pastor online respond to this interview yesterday and he said, hmm. he said that these visitations by what these military personnel are talking about is most likely things of God's creation that have not fallen. They were far enough away from Adam and Eve's fall. Wait, how many people are going to jump on this? And so they're here. They're more advanced. They're faster. They can make 90 degree angles at, you know, incredible speeds and become visible and invisible. All the pilots testified it was there and then it vanished. Or off of San Diego, it was there. We, we followed it in our F-18s. It stopped and went right into the ocean without making a splash in the water. Without making a splash in the water. No heat signature from the device in the air. Why? Because it's spiritual, I believe. But this pastor is saying, these are beings that are still pure. They're not fallen. And they may be here as God's emissaries, as God's uh, agents to help us. He said, maybe they're angels. I'm, I'm getting angry. Okay. <laughs> how, many, how many people believe this guy or want to believe this guy? Time will tell. Point is this. This is the breaking news in the world today. 
We submit to you tonight that all of these things that are going on in the world, we only touched on a few of them. Natural disasters, civil unrest, lawlessness, men, man, Mr. and Mrs. Mankind, deciding to do what is right in their own eyes rather than obey the natural or the old rules or laws or the U.S. Constitution or any human natural law that man has for man. This is all happening at the same time. So we want you to know your word. The Bible is your only hope. Don't be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. When the Bible, thank God, the Bible says in the last days there's going to be incredible deception coming. Oh, do you understand that when the Bible says that, it takes the sting away from the whole thing. Thank you, Lord, for telling us this. So church, let's stand, because as you do, the same God that warned us about these things is the same God that gave us the promises of redemption and salvation. I got good news for you. Jesus is not an alien. Jesus is not from some other planet. Jesus is God the Son, having come from heaven to earth to die on the cross for your sins and mine. And Satan hates you. He's real. And he wants to destroy you by lies, and he wants to murder you with falsehood to get you off of the target, which is Jesus Your Bible has never been more relevant than it is right now. And you trusting Christ is your only protection. Loving on Jesus and letting him love on you is your only, only assurance in this world. Father, we pray and we ask of you, almighty God, that we thank you, Lord, that as Amir literally traffics the globe, no kidding, often in a month's time, from one continent to the next, to the next, to the next. We thank you, Lord, that you've brought my good friend back here for us and with us tonight. We pray for Miriam and the family. You'd watch over them and keep them safe. And Father, we pray that you'd continue to use Amir powerfully. We thank you, Lord, that uh, he is no doubt, the uh, analytics is still yet too young to... Uh, analyze, but we're grateful that on the Real Life Network, Amir's information, teaching, everything's there. And we pray that you just continue to bless him and his books and all that you've given him to do. I thank you, Lord God, that 25 years ago when we first met, little did we know that we would be standing here right now. Hmm. Little did we know that we'd be able to proclaim the everlasting gospel to the ends of the earth. But Lord, here we are. And we thank you, Father. And we pray that even tonight, men and women and boys and girls would say, that's it. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins Mm. and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And I give my heart to you now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 You guys, you have uh, books? I think they're over. You guys, we, we think, we're not sure that Amir's got some books in the foyer. We think. God bless you. See you Sunday. Thank you so much.